Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Brandon. And it's time for another brand new movie review. Today we're going to talk about uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And Brandon, we just saw the movie. Tell us a little bit about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Well, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes follows the exploits of a ragtag group of survivalists, if you will. Well, survivors. Uh, survivors, yes. Survivors. Uh, they are in the thick woods of California, the forests. California and they happen to run into the apes that we see in the beginning the apes are speculating whether or not the humans even still exist yeah uh, it was shown to us in the in the opening montage the spread of the virus how it wiped out the population uh, just decimated the which Earth, jumps Earthly straight population. off of the same effect they did at the end of the first one <clears throat> yeah exactly and uh, then they f we find out that the the humans and the apes meet in, in California, and uh, the apes follow the humans back to uh, their area where they're surviving. And we uh, get to meet Gary Oldman's character and uh, not, not too many other people than we've already been introduced to specifically. We kind of follow Gary Oldman and these other guys through the rest of the movie. Uh, we see the conflict between the humans and the apes and what it's going to lead to. Well, Brandon, uh, how'd you feel about Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? I felt like I myself could do a much better job of convincing intelligent apes that I personally was not a threat, as I too am basically just an intelligent ape. Okay, so that that implies that you thought that the humans just weren't smart enough. Pretty much. Oh, really? Okay. All right, go ahead. Uh, in the beginning, I, uh, we we see them, you know... The, the main character guy, he does in the very beginning say, we don't want any trouble, basically. He he tells them that. And they're kind of like, you know, go back to your people. But, like, towards the middle of the movie, like, they were, when they weren't trusting each other, I just felt like it could have been like, you know, I didn't know that was there. You know, this is a shock to me as well. It takes them, like, a minute and a half to do that. All the while, the apes are, like, really just... They want them gone again. That they're thinking about, you know, getting rid of them. Okay. So I, I didn't, and I just say there were there were lots of things that I liked about this movie. It was, uh, it was an interesting story. I want to say that uh, the apes were very well done in this movie. Uh, it was it seamless to me, just like the last one was. Uh, I felt that the interaction between them was was very good, and there was a there was a great place that this movie was going. I don't feel like it really got to where I'd hoped it would by the end of the movie and so you, so you were you were hoping it would cover more ground to get I was what, a little bit closer even to where we would be at the beginning of the of something akin to the original Planet of the Apes is that what uh, you're... probably oh, like okay. that what, right. I, what I didn't get out of this movie and I was really hoping for was yeah, okay. I didn't get a scope of the largeness of the ape population or even really? the amount of the humans that were there I felt like they used a lot of really close camera angles filled with apes or filled with humans to try to get a scope of a much larger area when we weren't getting a much larger area. The biggest area we got was kind of a, a, a wide off view of the city where most people weren't or a kind of wider shot of the apes encampment which was not really indicative of how many there were supposed to have been I, I felt like. The other okay. thing the other thing that really I didn't care for in this movie was Gary Oldman. I love Gary Oldman, but Gary Oldman's usually the guy who has that faint glimmer of hope, wants to keep wants to keep the people believing. And this one, he was the one that was kind of like, let's go get these dirty apes. Well, that just means that we're not typecasting him. We're not typecasting him. No, but I also felt he was severely underused. He would have been better to me as the main character in this. The guy that was the main character. If they had been switched their role reversal, I would have been way better with that. I, I can see why you'd say that. Um, I think the problem with that is that uh, the movie was doing something with having it, with having the main guy be a younger guy. Mm -hmm. um, I think that if it had been Gary Oldman, it would have been. They would have had to have gone a bit of a different direction script-wise because of family parallels. 
and stuff yeah. like that. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not entirely with you there. But um, any, anyway, uh, what else? What else? Anything else before you flip your sign? Uh, before I flip my sign, this was a really tough one for me. Really? Uh, it, it was totally tough because I'm like, well, there were so many things that I really liked, and then there were just these things that were nagging on me. Okay. So, in the end, I'm going to say I would actually go see this in the movie theater. I am feeling it, but there were some issues, big issues that I had with this movie. Okay, uh, well, Brandon, this movie made, made me feel like I wish this was somehow a TV show so I wouldn't have to wait three years for the next installment. <laughs> uh, what, we've got, what we've got going on here is a uh, really good film series, and it's a, it's a series that is... Uh, taking its time and I love that it's taking its time and I just I, I, I'm getting so used to unfortunately the kind of like binge watching era of things that this being a movie series I don't feel like I'm looking at a trilogy I, I, I feel like I'm looking at a 9, 10, 11 film epic right now mm -hmm. and that's awesome and I'm excited about it I just wish that I didn't have to wait as long and that's a big testament to the film Brandon I loved this movie. All right. I loved almost everything about it. Uh, okay. I was I was really happy with it. Uh, here's the thing. I made the mistake, and I call it a mistake now because I didn't realize how good the other one was. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, somehow I missed the first one, and I just didn't get around to watching it, and I finally went ahead and watched it this week in preparation for this and just loved it. Just fell in love with it. About time, And you Yeah. and Because um, I, I loved it, too. And I got to the end of that movie... And for a second, I had what you had at the end of this one, which was, man, I kind of wish they'd gone a little bit farther. The credits start to roll, and then all of a sudden, we get, oh, by the way, virus, everybody's getting wiped out. And I went, yes, that is how you end this movie. That is fantastic. Um, not to mention, I, I was just giddy that uh, they set up the potential for actually doing uh, uh, Planet of the Apes with the people that they sent off into space in that movie. So, I mean, like... I really liked that movie. Uh, it was a um, it, it was a really good character piece too, um, and had a, a, a lot of decent commentary, which is what the original movie did. And the commentary mm -hmm. is different, but but um, but not in, not entirely different. Uh, one of the things, and so I, I feel like just talking about the franchise in general for a second. One, sure. one of the things that um, that I like about this franchise is that um, it is pretty much by and large a prequel to that movie there's not much at all that they've done yet besides the time gap and they might find a way to make that work even where you couldn't just say so far that this is a prequel to that movie and that they wouldn't even have to eventually get there and make that movie um, because it's like okay we need for for a uh, spoiler alert for the original 1968 Planet of the Apes but to make to, but to make this work with Planet of the Apes with that basic story um, humanity has to have destroyed itself mm -hmm. and for a minute there in that movie I was like oh they're, they're going a different direction with it they are, but they're not. Humanity still destroys itself. It just isn't through any. It just isn't through a massive war like we probably mm -hmm. were thinking in '68 when we were at the height of the Cold War. And so what we have, uh, so what we have in this is a more contemporary version that still kind of fits with that of we destroyed <clears throat> ourselves through science as opposed to through yes. war. Well, uh, how much of science fiction right now is about that? How much of this post-apocalyptic stuff are we getting? What <laughs> I love so much about this movie, Brandon, is yes. that. It takes, because we decided to bring back Planet of the Apes, mm -hmm. it does the post-apocalyptic thing without feeling like it's just that again. It really adds this other component to it that we haven't really gotten to see in, in these kind of movies, because just how would you do it? Um, where, where like, Planet of the Apes originally is kind of post-apocalyptic, but you don't know it until you get to the end of the movie, right? So it's, sure. so it's already like that. So what we're getting with this is post-apocalyptic in that you get to see the end of a civilization and the beginning of another one. And you get to see them paralleled. And what I'm finding most fascinating, and I thought the movie just handled this brilliantly. Um, what I what I'm enjoying most is the 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 the, uh, the comparison and contrast of the like like a culture between them and the politics and how they each handle things. Um, what we have here is a pretty good um, comparison of two kinds of governments mm -hmm. where you have a dictatorship and you have what is supposed to be um, a uh, so something something more akin to um, a democracy and 
ultimately they both fall apart mm -hmm. um, without giving too much away uh, in the film because uh, one of them is a g is is like a, a society that's crumbled and is trying to rebuild itself, and another one is a brand new society that hasn't figured itself out yet. Uh, Brandon, I love the character par parallels in this movie. Um, I thought that there were for some every good I thought that for every major character on 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 the human side, you had or on the on the on the ape side. Let me start with the ape side because they're they're for this film more important at least to me. Me. Uh, they're more they, of the they're, focus. They're, yeah, they're more of the focus. So, and I liked that. Uh, that was one of the things I really liked about this. And so, it should be. So you have. I mean, I could see it either way because it is about both. And and keep in mind, you know, it, Planet of the Apes. So we're getting rid of the humans. So we do kind of want to see what they're doing before there aren't any more, or before before the ones that are left end up getting um, enslaved or sent off as animals, or however they end up playing it um, before we get to the. 2000 year in the future version which I really doubt they're going to go that far um be, especially mm -hmm. because especially because this uh, this world already looks too much like the the Planet of the Apes movie in that we already have apes on horses and stuff. Mm. And so I'm like, well, they're... Actually, now that I think about it, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. This just occurred to me. I'm of two minds about it, actually, because what you've got in Planet of the Apes is a stagnated culture that uh, could... That, that, like, that, like, um, could have gone farther with technology, but they're held back because of, like, outdated religion and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you could have a culture that looks about like this that stagnates really fast after they start um, m making up doctrine and stuff. So uh, that's interesting. Um, so anyway, uh, so so for every major ape, you've got a component on the human side. Mm -hmm. And um, so, but but they're not exactly the same. Uh, they find really really cool ways to um, not not make them you know exactly the same thing. Uh, it's a movie about family. It's a movie about leadership. Uh, I think <laughs> that uh, Caesar is one of the most interesting leader characters I've seen in a long time. I love his character arc in this. <laughs> I really enjoy getting to uh, see see him uh, think he's got it all figured out and it falls apart for him. And um, that he has to learn just as much as everybody else has. Yeah, to learn. and ultimately the. The kind of message for this movie is is um and you know me I'm really I'm a big sucker for the uh, what makes human human stories and what we have here is is a, is a message that at the end of the day says that we are both um we both have intellect and are an animalistic we, mm -hmm. we we have both of those things we have to find a way to 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 uh, to balance them and that we are not just intellectuals or or just primal beings. We, we, we must find a way to, 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 uh, to combine those things. And what I liked about this movie is that each side thinks that they are superior to the other one. Each side thinks the other one are just animals and are worthless and I, don't, I'm, I won't give away where exactly all of that goes, but it's um, but it's not but it's not just what I thought. You know what right. I mean? Um, and also, it's not black and white. And the original Planet of the Apes was not black and white about that either, mm -hmm. which is the thing I really like about this. Brandon, I think there's some really smart storytelling here, man. Um, I think this movie I has would, a lot of heart. I would agree with you. Uh, I think it's sad and tragic, mm -hmm. uh, which it needs to be because of where it's all going. Uh, anyway, so uh, at the end of the day, boy, I'm feeling it really hard, really hard. Uh, I didn't give you a negative. I should give a, I should give a negative because it's not it's not a perfect movie. Um, What's your? Biggest? I don't. I don't agree with a lot of what you said, but I. But but it's not. But it's not perfect. Um, I will. I will say that I see what you're saying about old men. We'll get there in a second. Yeah. Um, for me, the biggest negative is probably just that I thought that the human characters on the whole were a little bit more generic than they were the first time around. Mm. But the thing about it is, the first time around, it has to start from a human place, and so we need characters that we are really invested in, because A, it's a human that causes all this to spiral out of control in the first place, and B, um, we begin with, a, uh, with an ape from birth all the way up, so you can't just have ape care. Oh, by the way, real quick, sorry. Mm -hmm. Another thing I really, really loved was the the, uh, the the character progression for all of those major apes from the first movie. I uh, mm. could not believe um, how well fleshed out they all were. Uh, yeah, they're four, cool, aren't they? Four or five of these guys, I feel like I know like like I know any other character in movies, and I, re I really like that. But, yeah, I don't know. The, the main guy in this, um, I, I wasn't as... I wasn't as invested with him as I wanted to be until I until I got to the end and I could see him more from Caesar's eyes because I mm. was really with Caesar the whole movie. So um, I cared about him only as far as I felt Caesar cared about him. So that so that that worked out okay, but it took a while. As far as Gary Oldman goes, um, 
he wasn't wrong for the part. He just didn't get enough screen time. Um, what, what I and that's I, all. It I was. thought about that too. I think it's just a screen time issue, honestly. Um, because again, it's a movie about leadership. It would have been nice to have gotten to see him do more leadery things and then compare those to what was going on with with uh, with what with how um, Caesar was handling things, especially because um, <clears throat> Caesar has a moment, an opportunity for change. He takes it. This guy has the same thing and he doesn't take it. It would have been really nice to have seen that um, uh, play out a little bit more from his. perspective perspective. At the same time, I do feel like it's mostly more of a movie about the apes, so I don't know. Well, you, you could say that I'm pigeonholing Gary, Gary Oldman in his character role in this, but like you said, we didn't get him enough on screen, but that's not, like, my problem seems to lie deeper than that. I just felt like, as far as a leader goes, this guy was weaker than weak. The, the most we get to see him do is hold I, a megaphone up I, to everybody. And I, and I like that. Uh, is the thing. I, 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 I like don't that buy that he could have gotten to that position the way he is in this movie. Um, they don't have a whole lot to choose from is the thing. Um, he doesn't seem like a bad leader. He seems like he's, or until... But the thing is, he's faced with something that he just doesn't know how to handle. I feel like just basic day-to-day, -day, I'm like like trying to lead my people back to civilization. He seems fine at that stuff. To and me, he, but he might be, but you're, again, you're right. Not enough screen time of that type of yeah. Thing. Sure. So 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 may, maybe you could you could say he's not fleshed out enough. Um, I, I also think that there is a little bit of a character a, a character parallel going on between him and um, and uh, Koba. And with mm. where where um where uh, each of them uh, has has decided of their own accord that the other side is are uh, animals that need to be put down. You, you and, do make a good point. And there. Uh, so like I'm not I'm not with you when you say that just because you like seeing Gary Oldman play the guy that rallies everybody. He well, it's not been just that. because. Um, but I felt like because of that he probably should have been more the main character. Sure. Now, with the, with the parallels that, that you're a, making. But but. He, makes more sense. He can't be straight up the main character because it, unless the movie wants to do the really risky thing of making me totally invested in that guy and then let him do the totally jerk face thing when we get there. Um, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, but, but I don't know. I, the thing is, when he makes the choice he makes, I buy it. It's just... But I, I didn't. Don't, oh, okay. All right. I, well, then, I buy it. I just don't... I'm I'm just not I'm just not with him as much as maybe I'd like and, to be. I don't know. Maybe the reason I'm not buying it is because I didn't get enough of his thought process in that. Like I don't know why he was so quick to like turn like say if they come back we're blasting. Them. I could see why you'd say that. Yeah. So I didn't have that in the moment, but I'm just right, giving I, a guttural reaction. I, I can see right, why, I can see why you would say it, that. Exactly. And that's that's more where I'm coming. That's probably the very root. We probably just found the very root of my disdain for this character. Um, let's jump to some other places. Sure. I, one of the things I really also appreciate about this franchise is uh, that we're getting the culture of the apes uh, in a really, like, deliberate and, um, like, like over time kind of fashion. Um, I like that they're, they're not... Um, uh, I, I like that they're not immediately after the first movie, like standing upright and wearing clothes and talking complete sentences and stuff. Um, yeah, especially they're, and because, they're still learning. Especially because plenty of time passes between the first two movies, and they could have gone there. And I'm glad they didn't because it just I, I, I buy it more. Um, th this movie really impresses me in that, and the first one did too. In that, it finds a way to make this whole scenario feel really plausible, which is hilarious because it's preposterous but like like with the way they handle the science and stuff and of course they don't tell you too much about how the thing actually works because right. you can't but like they find a way of, 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 of making it to me at least feel like if this happened this is how it would go down so it's very realistic to you yeah I like the fact that they call it the simian flu that was a really good term to come up with for this because that's exactly what we would call it if something like that happened how did you like the ape school scene the little bit that we got where the the one ape is teaching the yeah, little all apes. of that is cool and like i said you, you know just the culture stuff in general i really dug um i like that we're that, that we're uh, seeing you know the, the the progress they've made um incremental progress is what i meant to say earlier yes. I, I i like that we're getting to see the progress they're making in language and written language and um i like that i uh, that i'm a sucker for details and i like that we got like like uh I, 
a list of rules from uh, uh, from from Caesar mm. and stuff. You know, where where uh, again, it is kind of um, if not a monarchy, a dictatorship. He's kind of he's kind of you know given them this this uh, this like this like set of commandments. Well, and he, uh, I really dig that. He's kind of like an it, he's kind of like an emperor. His name is Caesar. His name is Caesar. Yeah, he's the leader. Naturally. I mean, obviously, I mean that's a that's a big parallel right there I, on the on the face of it. But it, like what you're saying, is, I absolutely agree with you on this part. I thought that the detail to their culture, specifically what we did get to see, yeah. was great. I liked seeing their units, how they kind of all fit in in this. I call it almost a hierarchical system, if you will. Seemed to me kind of like that. You know, you've got him at the top, but he has his advisors. Yeah, of he course. He sure. he surrounds him with, like the, the Senate, if you will. And, uh, you know, I was a little bit worried that they were going to take him in a place where he was going to become, like, this really, um, like, tragic supervillain kind of figure. Because, I mean, if you think about it, and this is one of the things that I'm that I'm really enjoying about this franchise, is that huh? they, they can do about anything they want to to get us there. Because we just don't know what happened that got the apes in control mm. so he could be uh, um he, he could be benevolent or not you know um like, like like when i saw the first movie i felt like i was i was kind of seeing uh like the origin of a supervillain and then you get to the end and it's not quite that not exactly all, I mean, you know you know he he's a he's a character who does does things to characters that you like and and you go oh man it's it, this is tragic it's too bad that he's had to go this way but you appreciate why he's doing that he's really just becoming the he's becoming the leader he would ultimately be well he's reading a revolution or he's leading a revolution yes. ultimately that just gets him into their own city state at the end exactly and when yes. you get into this movie there there was a there was a moment where i wondered if uh, when early on, when it looked like he might go to war with the humans, if he wasn't maybe turning into more of, uh, or if he if he had the potential to turn into a more power hungry kind of emperor, and mm. we, and 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 that and that doesn't happen um, because we get that we get that through another character, um, yes. and, and we need that, and that's great, uh, and and um, and there's a revenge thing in this that works that works well. It's it's the way you ought to do revenge stories, um, and I just kind of thought that the. The way that um, the the two states, if you will, uh, ended up having to go to war was really sophisticated. Um, mm -hmm. Like 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 I, I, I liked I liked all the details there. Um, I can see why you might say that some of the humans weren't smart enough, but like the reasonings for why all of that happened, I thought were good well, enough. The, the apes are justified in their reaction to what they think the humans are are doing to them, and then Caesar comes back. Uh, Caesar comes back to the kind of the forefront and shows them, you know, the error of their ways. Yeah, and what I'm saying, what I'm saying is, all I'm saying is it's complicated, and, yes, and it it's is. complicated in the right way. Yes. Um, because you've also got the uh, humans um, uh, reacting to things where they seem justified because nobody has all the information. Right. And that's how things like this happen. It's, so, you're exactly right. But, that, but that's what I liked about it is that not, people don't and have that all is, the information. That's, that's a great part of this movie. It just didn't go far enough for me. I would have, if, if they could have compressed like the last hour into say a 30 minute segment and giving me more in the last 30 30 minutes i would have been more okay well with i don't that. agree with that at all but that's but that's cool um there is a there is a lot of action there is some Long action scenes in this, but I feel like they they uh, they serve the story, and there's plenty of actual character stuff happening through a lot of them. Also, this is old school. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it, Charlton Heston level epic. And when you do that, you've got to have these big action scenes with a bazillion people all in a frame um and, and like and like you know stuff's going down like, mm. like 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 i don't i don't feel like um i do in in other things like like maybe a transformers movie where it's like okay <laughs> there's there's all this stuff going on on screen but i'm not invested i don't care about any of these characters right. so i so i don't care and also it's all just an excuse to get there Th there are no excuses here i don't think to get us to an action scene and that's why when we do have these longer action scenes um i don't mind them because i feel like stuff's happening I feel like things are playing out, um, and the stakes are really, really high. Uh, so anyway, ultimately, as I said, I'm feeling, I thought this was great. Uh, Brandon is somewhat feeling it, but I, I'm feeling yeah, it more than Brandon I'm, is. I'm back here on it, but I, I, I enjoyed it for what it is. I, I did. It's the next stage in in this franchise, and I do look forward to what's coming next. Boy, I just think, I think it's brilliant. Um, I, th this this is, um, for me, movie of the summer tied with Winter
Winter Soldier and oh. X Men First Class. I mean, I mean, X Men. Well, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I'm gonna put it right on par with the with those movies. So yeah. All right. Sounds good. But uh, anyway, everybody, thanks as always for uh, watching, and we'd love to hear your comments. So if you saw the movie, tell us what you thought about it, and uh, we will watch something uh, at least next week and do another new movie review for you. And in the meantime, I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Brandon. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Do 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 do